in how many pipe down, Walmart pipe, employees? Pipe how down. many Walmart employees? If you had that many, charged? shut his mic off. Conservative libertarian. Two great tastes that taste great together. <laughs> so how do we get back from China? Be a conservative libertarian who follows the rules of God. Hmm. Hmm. John. Hmm. Hmm. What would that look like? <laughs> what, could that, what could that possibly look like? What could you possibly have that would look like that? Oh, I don't know. Jesus. <laughs> to get money from the stimulus bill written by the Apollo Alliance, which he is the head of here in New York. That's right, and he's also an advisor, a consultant for the National Apollo Alliance as well. Okay, good. So then we have Jeff Jones and Bill Ayers. We have uh, Rashid Khalidi, who is, um, uh, who is a, 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 a radical in his own uh, right, tied directly to uh, Barack Obama. Um, the Movement for a Democratic Society, what is that? That is a reconstituted version of the old students for a democratic society. Can you just draw ovals from the center to China in the same way, but back towards a theocracy? Well, there's one. There's, no, no, wait, 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 it's coming. Wait, oh, 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 oh. oh. This is Glenn's blackboard so we have to play by Glenn's rules which are if you subscribe to an idea you also subscribe to that idea's ideology and to every possible negative consequence that that ideology remotely implies when you carry it to absurd extremes <laughs> for instance progressives if you believe in a minimum safety net for the nation's neediest you believe in total and absolute government control so if you believe that faith provides a strong moral tent post for a nation's foundation that could only lead to totalitarian theocracy. <laughs> but, but, but John, that's crazy. <laughs> that can't be right, because there would be all kinds of redonkulous embedded clues. You're absolutely my f***ing right. I told you that we were going we to talk about these things. We are going to talk about Obama, the left, internationalists, graft, acorn-style organizations, revolution, and hidden agenda. O L I G A R H. One letter is missing. Why did I select these words? Because Acorn selects tides. They all select their 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 words first, and then tie them all together into one word. Oligarch. Quite the one that's missing is why. Conservative libertarian. Let's start with conservative. Oh, well, what's this word right here? Con. A con is a convict. And serve. Con. Serve. A convict. And a slave. I don't want to be a slave prisoner, but it's your ideology. I guess libertarian somehow mitigates. Well, let's look at that. Lie! 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 They're lying to us! Who's doing the lying? Who is doing the lying? Tell word on the board who is doing the lying Aryans Aryans holy oh my god 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 Aryans but John but John if that was true why did they spell it without the Y they took out the Y they don't want you asking that question. <laughs> I am coming for your books and brains. I am coming. <laughs> what does that leave? Well, it leaves only one word. I'm not without my biases, but it's pretty clear to me that Glenn Beck is using fear and anger to achieve his rhetorical goals. He is leaning on these pathos appeals to persuade his listeners of his viewpoints. However, he is dangerous because he establishes a credibility with the viewer first. 
using tricks like his chalkboard and misrepresenting facts, cutting his guest's microphone off, and even dissecting works of art like you saw earlier, he's establishing an ethos which he uses to convey his pathological appeals later. John Stewart provides valuable and certainly comical insight into Glenn Beck's rhetorical methods. Stewart uses reductio ad absurdum to continue Glenn Beck's rhetorical methods to the point where they're absolutely ridiculous. Unfortunately for Glenn Beck, that's not very far. The striking point about John Stewart's argument and his performance on his show is how little effort it took for him to be as ridiculous and, if not more so, than Glenn Beck is on his show. I think this is very interesting for uh, two different reasons. First of all, it shows you how close to the line to absolutely ridiculous you have to be in order to be persuasive using a purely pathos-based appeal. You have to you know, break down and cry in the air. You have to be so close to the line of batshit crazy that people believe you. And secondly, it shows you how effective that when done right, and whether or not you agree with Glenn Beck, he is persuasive. It really demonstrates how effective pathos appeals can be when they are done correctly, and also how to defeat them if you need to. That's our show. Here it is. Your moment is in. I'm not a journalist. Um, I'm an opinion guy. To get a report. No, I'm not. Oh, you're a reporter. No, I am not. So you check no facts at all. I am no. No, no. no. I am. Not, I am a commentator. Oh. I am a commentator. a commentator. I commentate on life. Do you?